This is Hakadabi, and I'm here with SCP-86, 87, 88, 89, and 90. Starting with SCP-86, the Office of Doctor Redacted. I have a number, SCP-86, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-86 is contained within Office A-19 at the IO Research Station 71. The secretary aerial post outside the door is to be staffed by one armed guard. All components of SCP-86 are to be kept within 6 meters of each other. SCP-86-1 is to be kept on, de on the office desk with a single connection to the telephone at secretary's post. All communications between SCP-86 and personnel are to be recorded, transcribed, and archived. Every six days, SCP-86-2 is to be used to sharpen and four standard commercially purchased 16 centimeter or, or H3 pencils, continuing until at least 95% of, of the mass of each pencil has been converted into pencil shavings. SCP-86-2 is not to be emptied, even if personal, even if personnel judge that it has become clogged. In such an eventuality, personnel have to wait 10 minutes and then resume the sharpening. Every seven days, SCP-86-3 is to be filled with a block of 200 at standard commercially purchased staples. Every 20 days, SCP-86-4 is to be filled with 15 sheets of standard or er, blank cellulose acetate film produced on site. SCP-86-5 is to be drained of waste material whenever it fills more than halfway. The waste matter is to be incinerated. All reading material requested by SCP-86 must be approved by site command. All research proposals made by SCP-86 must be approved by 205 level of personnel. Description SCP-86 is a collective of sessile organism whose component parts resemble items of office equipment from 1978, which contains a conscious claim to be that of former Air Foundation Administrator Dr. Redacted, 1907-1978. Its eight components are a rotary telephone, SP-86-1, a wall-mounted pencil sharpener, SP-86-2, a desk stapler, also known as SCP-86-3, a micro H reader SV eighty six four, a water cooler SV eighty six five, a filing cabinet SCP eighty six six, a scientific calculator SV eighty six seven, and a side roll SV eighty six eight. No physical connection or electromagnetic transmission between any of these components has been detected. Each component of SCP-86 is composed of biological material contained within a carapace made of varying amounts of, of, of kitten, keratin, and calcium carbonate, as well as trace amounts of nylon, rayon, and polyester. DNA analysis reveals that tissue is contained within SCP-86 are, are truly of human origin and that are expunged. SCP-86-1 consumes a large mass of neural tissues which functions as a brain despite several conformational and anatomical irregularities. Uh, this brain hosts the majority of SCP-86 its consciousness. SCP-86-1 also contains an ear equivalent and it receives mouthpiece allowing SCP-86 to hear. SCP-86 is able to speak an exact match of Dr. Redacted's voice and accent via the earpiece, although neurological and ultrasound examination have not revealed any ill-arrange or structures. SV-86-1 is also capable of ringing, however SV-86 has stated that ringing gives them a headache. Consequently, the only circumstances of the wretched rings are awakening from sleep, at which when it rings twice in rapid succession, and when in distress, S, at which point it rings SOS in Morse code. And if you don't know Morse code, it's something like this. Or was that the right around? I don't remember. It's most simple to remember a message in Morse code. That's the point. 
SCP-8632, 3, and 4 function as food intake organs. SCP-862 consumes pencil shavings, SCP-863 consumes staples, and SCP-864 consumes microfilm. SCP-865 functions as a combination bladder and bowel equivalent, sharing metabolic waste. SCP-866 contains several organs which appear to combine sensory and manipulatory functions. SCP-86 has proven capable of reading printed material and physically manipulating small items. For example, for instance, turning pages and alphabetizing documents, which, when they are placed in SCP-866, at, at SCP-86's request, it is regularly provided with non-classified reading material and non-classified clerical work. The biological functions of SCP-867 and and 8 have not been determined. However, SCP-86 has said that it experienced significant discomfort and confusion when they are removed from its vicinity, and it is therefore speculated that they have some role in its cognition. Although SCP-86 accepts input, its output seems to be random glyphs and LED noise. SCP-86 has demonstrated that it has, has full access to Dr. Redacted memories, and all tests indicate a 100% match with pre-existing psychological profiles of Dr. Redacted. However, SV86 has pointed out that there is no way to confirm that it actually thinks of itself as Dr. Redacted, and that it may be an alien intelligence expertly posing as Dr. Redacted, or a sleeping persona which in theory believes itself to be Dr. Redacted. Well, at least it means they aren't, aren't lying. Acquisition Log SCP 86 is presumed to have been created on June 12, 1978. When Dr. Redacted was resumed, killed by the PN class events resulting from the decommissioning of SCP Unknown. On June 20th, 1978, Dr. Redacted's office was being emptied by maintenance personnel so that it could be assigned to his successor. At this point, SCP 86 1 began ringing repeatedly. We now connected to Tough on Jack, maintenance personnel notified level 3 operatives who answered SCP 86 1. During the subsequent conversation, SV-86 identified itself as Dr. Redacted and ordered Level 3 personnel to revoke its security clearance and make a re full report of its existence and properties to all five level personnel. Dr. Redacted was given a, a posthumous commendation for a meritorious conduct in either reporting himself as an SCP or in influencing the anomalous entity emulating his behavior into doing so. An uh, excise note. SV86 was originally classified as safe, but as say that it's that it because it is a safe entity with a knowledge biology and metabolism and with access to full members of SV Foundation for Snow, who previously had low for security appearance, it should be classified as legal good. A new note. Although we appreciate uh, SV eighty-six's conscientious, there is at this time no pressing reason to classify it as Euclid. If circumstances change, we'll I'll reconsider, which is why SV-86 is safe. Continuing, we have SCP-87, the stairwell. This one is infamous, and, and very much a terrifying SCP. There's even a really fun game based on this SCP. Out of number, SCP-87. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-87 is located on the campus of Redacted. The doorway leading to SCP-87 is constructed of reinforced steel with an, an electric release is lock me mechanism. It has been disguised to resemble a janitorial closet consistent with the design of the building. The lock mechanism on the doorknob will not release unless a, an unknown amount of volts are applied in conjunction with counterclockwise as rotation of the key. The inside of the door is lined with 6 centimeters of industrial foam um, um, padding.
Due to the results of the final exploration, see document 87 and IV, or I'm guessing 4, no personnel are allowed or permitted access to SCP-87. Description SCP-87 is an unlit platform staircase. There's a send on a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semicircle platform of approximately 3 meters in diameter. The ascent direction rotates 180 degrees at each platform. The design of SCP-87 lip is subject to a visual range of approximately 1.5 flights. A light source is required for any subjects exploring in, in SV-87, as there are no lighting fixtures or windows present. Lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have shown to be ineffective, as SCP-87 seems to absorb extra light, I mean, excess light. Subjects report and audio recordings confirm the distress vocalization from what is presumed to be a child between the ages of unknown and unknown. The source of the distress calls is M it's estimated to be located approximately 200 meters below the initial platform. However, any attempts to descend the staircase have failed to bring subjects closer to the source. The depth of the descent calculated from exploration and forward the lungs exploration is shown to be far beyond both the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. At this time, it is unknown if SCP-87 has an, an endpoint. SCP-87 has gone uh, has undergone four or video explorations. By Class C personnel, each subject conducting an exploration has encountered SCP-87. In one, which appears as a face with no visible pupils, nostrils, or mouth. The nature of SCP-871 is entirely unclear, but it is determined that it is not the source of the pleading. Subjects so if it is feeling to the extent of intense paranoia and fear when faced with SCP-871, but it is undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or simply natural reactions. Addendum. Over a period of two weeks following expiration 4, several members of the staff and students from the redacted campus report in not Talking at a variable rate of 1 to 2 seconds for not coming from the interior of SV-87. The door leading to SV-87 has been in the fitted with 6 cm thick industrial padding. All reports of knocking have ceased. Authorized personnel may refer to documents 87-1 through 87-4 for transcripts of explorations 1, 2, 3, and 4. Unfortunately, it appears that at the fourth one has been expunged. But starting with the first one, 87.1, if we go ahead and read this, if I can, it looks pretty long. Document 87.1. Exploration I, or 1. <clears throat> the 8432 is a young, is a 43-year-old Caucasian male of average build and appearance and unremarkable psychological background. Class D designation is a result of demotion due to mishandling in a, an unknown SCP. The 8432 is equipped with a 75-watt a flood a lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours. A handheld camcorder fed with a transmission stream and all your headsets for communications with Dr. Or blank at control. The 8432 steps through the doorway onto the initial platform. Despite the wattage, the flood lamp only eliminates the first nine steps. The second platform is not visible. <coughs> Excuse me. It's freaking dark! Is your floodlight functioning properly? The 8432 shines light out the door and into the academic building's hallway. The light reaches significantly further. Yeah, it's working! It just won't light these stairs all the way down. Thank you. Please continue. The 8432 
The stands are 13 steps before reaching in the second platform. The floor form is in the shape of a semicircle with an apparent currently concrete surface and walls. There are no distinct markings aside from nondescript patches of dust, dirt, or wear consistent with that uh, which is found in typical concrete stair. Oh well. The 8432 rotates 180 degrees to begin descent on the second flight, then pauses. Reason for stopping? You hear that? There's a freaking kid down there! Sounds like one! Let me describe the audio as feeding through the camera or mic at this time. Could you please describe the sound? It's young, either female or a very young boy. Or a non binary person because I'm not into a lot of exclusion and have people like myself. Anyway, it's crying and sobbing and saying, Please, help, please. Yeah, it keeps repeating that and crying. Can you estimate its distance from current location? Ah, uh, frick, I don't know, maybe 200 meters down? Please continue down the next flight. The subject descends another 13 steps. As he reaches the landing, audio of the child, as described, is picked up. The child alternates between sobbing and wailing. In, in the words, please help, and down here, level of audio is consistent with it, the AD432's report of it being approximately 200 meters is below. Can you still hear the crying? Yeah, we're picking it up as well. Please continue down. Stop if you notice any changes in the audio or environment. The subject descends in our three flights of stairs before stopping. Keep going? Please. The 8432 contains another 17 flights, 12 22 flights before stopping. There are no visual changes in the environment, and each flight has been in a consistent 13 steps. I'm not getting any freaking close to the kid. Stereo audio confirms that the crying noise has not increased in volume and it remains approximately 200 meters below the subject. Noted. Please continue. The subject continues another 28 flights before stopping. 50 flights total. The 8432 is saying on the 51st landing, counting the initial of ground of and level landing. The 8432 is estimated to be 200 meters below the initial platform. 34 minutes have elapsed. The volume of the crying has not increased. I feel a little uneasy. You spent a long time in the dark, or an unknown stairwell. It's natural. Please continue. The subject hesitates before stepping down and on the next stair. As the subject moves forward, the flood lamp illuminates a face located approximately at the bottom of the flight, SCP-871. It appears to be the same size and shape as a human head, except it is liking a mouth, nostrils, and pupils. The face is completely motionless, but is making direct eye contact, indicating its awareness of the, the 8432. Yelling, Frick! What the frick is that? that? Crap! Holy freaking crap! What the frick? Can you please describe what you see? It's some sort of freaking person and face thingy, and it's freaking looking right at me. Frick, 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 it's looking right at me. Is it moving? No. It's just staring at me. Frick, 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 it's creepy. Please approach and further illuminate the entity. I don't want to freaking... The face looks forward about to be directly toward 8432. The 8432. Frick, 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 redacted. D-8432 enters the panic state and rapidly ascends into SV-87. D-8432 reaches the ground floor in, in 18 minutes, at which time he collapses it as it passes out. There is no sign of SCP-871. Review of the footage indicates an equal number of flights and steps ascending as ascending. 
I hear the crying and pleading remains the same volume until the last flight, at which point it ceases. Regular reports indicate collapse was a result of the rapid ascension of the stairs, causing fatigue. <sighs> the second exploration log. I know you probably want me to make this its own video, but I actually personally don't like 87. I'm going to give them pretty much the same voice. I'm too lazy to keep on making any different voices. Also, in this case, it might be a little bit racist to make this person sound different than the other one. Anyway, expiration 2. The 9035 is a 28-year-old African-American male of strong young build. Psychological background indicates it's no abnormalities, abnormalities except an extreme hatred for women. Well, okay. Subject has an extensive record of that expunge. The 90-35 is equipped with a 100-watt flood lamp with a battery ca are capable of lasting 24 hours. A handheld corner filled it with a transmission stream and audio headset for communication with Dr. Airplank at control. The 9035 is also equipped with a, with a backpack containing 100 small LED lights with adhesive backs and battery lives of approximately 3 weeks. Lights turn on and off by compressing them. <sighs> the 9035 shines and the flood uh, lamp. And down the first flight of stairs. Despite the extra wattage, the light does not seem to does not eliminate beyond the ninth step. You want me to we'll go down the air dock? Please try on your floodlight at outside of SCP-87 to verify it is functioning properly. The 9035 shines a light. I enter the hallway. Comparison with the footage from exploration and one confirms it is indeed brighter. Thank you. Please continue to the first landing. Hey, dog. I know what you said and all, but I don't think I want to go down there. I can get that. <laughs> Damn. Please continue to the first landing. Dog, look, I... Interrupting. As for our early conversation... Please continue to the first landing. The 9035 pauses for 18 seconds, then descends 13 steps to the first landing and stops. Is that a kid? Please remove one of the adhesive lights and affix it to the wall on the landing. Doc, you hear that? Is that kid down there? That's unconfirmed. Please affix an adhesive light into the wall and verify it functions. The 9035 hesitates, then removes one of the lights from his back backpack and adheres it to with the wall. He presses is on the light and it turns on. Please turn off your flood lamp. The 9035 hesitates. It's again before turning off the lamp. The LED light illuminates the landing, but does not extend beyond the first step either way. Thank you. You may turn your flood out lamp back on. Please continue to descend. At each landing, you fix an LED light to the wall and turn it on. If you notice anything unusual, please report it. The 9035 uh, turns flood at line back on, then descends the next flight of stairs. As he sets foot on the landing, the audio picks up sounds of clearing and crying, consistent with those of the first ex exploration. Can you still hear the previously recorded audio? Uh, yeah. She sounds about 150, maybe 200 meters down. 
Am I supposed to get her? Look, dog, I don't, I don't do good with kids. Please place the light and continue down until you notice anything unusual. The subject adheres the light to the wall and turns it on, then continues on to the next landing. He adheres the third light to the wall and turns it on. The 9035 continues this in, in this manner and for the next 25 lights before stopping. I don't think I'm getting any closer to the kid, Doc. How far below would you estimate the source of the sound to be? Same as before, 150 to 200 meters down. Thank you, please proceed. The 9035 continues in the same fashion and for the next 24 or flights. At the 51st landing, he stops, push shows and a good gouge in a concrete a wall. Estimated to be approximately 7 meters long and 10 centimeters wide. The first step if down from the landing appears to be completely smashed into rubble. You see that? Yes, can you describe what you see? Looks like something slashed at the wall. The steps up over here there's all crumbled up and stuff. The slash mark looks really recent and really smooth. The 9035 touches a gouge mark. Yeah, it's smooth. It looks like glass. Thank you. Please continue down. Look, Doc, I think I've gone far enough. Please continue, as per our agreement. I don't want to be doing this agreement or, or not. That I expunged. The 9035 steps over the destroyed step and continues down the staircase. Nothing is noble at the next landing. The 9035 appears in LED to the wall and continues the same in fashion for another 38 flights. The sound eyeing again fleeing still has not gotten closer. The 9035 is on the ninth landing and 74 minutes have elapsed from the beginning of the expiration. Subject is estimated to be 350 meters below the initial platform. I feel like the kids is trying to learn me down here, Air Dog. I think it's time for me to. The 9035 stops talking and moving as the flood lamp illuminates 871. The face is staring directly at the 9035, again indicating awareness of the subject's presence. Although SV-87-1 appears to be uh, moving, its location is 38 eyes below the initial counter in exploration in 1, indicating it is mobile. Is there a reason you, you stopped? Unresponsive. The 935 is reading gross labor. SV-87-1 remains immobile for an additional 13 seconds. SV-87-1 uh, unblinks, yelling, incomprehensible. SV-87-1 drifts forward until it is approximately 90 centimeters from um, D-9035. Subject turns and flees up the staircase. Please re relax and calm down. Turn around. We need a closer look at the face. The 9035 ignores Dr. Blank and continues to uh, rapidly ascend. He continues to scream incomprehensibly. D-9035, can you hear me? Please slow down. <sighs> D-9035 is unresponsive and continues rapidly climbing the stairs. His screaming diminishes to babbling. After ascending 72 flights, the 9035 collapses on the 17th landing. The 9035, can you hear me? The 9035 is unresponsive, but labored breathing can be heard through the audio feed. For the next 14 minutes, the 9035 is immobile. The visual feed is black, and audio picks up only the subject's breathing and the continuous pleading from, from below. 
After 14 minutes and 32 seconds of alternating visual and audio feeds, the sound of a rapid heartbeat, not consistent with the human heartbeat, and low cracking noise is heard. Seven seconds later, D-95 gas and revives, continues the ascent to this, of the stairs rapidly and wordlessly. The heartbeat and cracking cease and nothing of normal is detected on the visual feed. He remains unresponsive. D-935 exits SCP-87 and sits on the floor outside of the entrance. D-935 then enters a, ca a ca catatonic state from which he has, has not yet recovered. Now for the third one, then we go to SCP-88. Oh, whoops. Exploration 3. The 9884 is a 23-year-old old female of average build and appearance. Psychological background indicates a history of depression. Subject has a mental record of using excessive force to blank. I mean, to die expunged. The 9884 is equipped with a 75 watt flood lamp with a battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream, and audio headset and for communication with Dr. Blank. A control. The 9884 is also equipped with a backpack containing 3.75 liters of water, 15 nutrient in bar, and one thermal blanket. The 9884 sets on the ground level the landing of SCP-87. The flood lamp illuminates only the first 19 steps. How do lights placed on the wall during the last exploration are not visible? Please ascend the first flight and continue and examine the landing wall. The 9884 descends 32 steps and stops at the landing. There is no trace of the LED light at the e e location footage from exploration 2 indicates it was placed. Yeah, um, it's just a dirty concrete wall. There's like nothing on it. No wait, it's a little bit sticky right here. The 9884 indicates the spot on the wall the LED light should have been located. There's a child crying down there. She's... She's begging for help and crying. Thank you. Please continue down the steps until you notice anything unusual. The 9884 descends. Upon reaching the next landing, audio of the crying child consistent with the prior two expressions is picked up. No LED lights appear to be present on any of the landing walls. The 9884 continues with no incident until she reaches the 17th landing. Hmm. Ew, there's something on the ground here and it smells really bad. It's all sticky and stuck on my shoe. Ugh, it's so gross. Video feed it confirms presence of a substance occupying a space approximately 50 centimeters in diameter. Can you describe the scent? Uh, it kind of smells like old rusty metal and pee. Thank you. Please continue until oh, you notice anything else. And dude, it would repeat himself. He was so scared. Not surprising. The 9884 continues to the 51st landing without incident. The 51st landing remains unchanged from the like, previous expedition, and similar observations are made. The 9884 is asked again to descend until anything unusual is noticed. So it continues to descend until the 8th landing is reached. The video feed directs and the subject yells. Ah, frick! There's a hole in the ground and I almost fell in! Video feed comes out with surprise to have a hole approximately 1 meter in diameter. The subject signs the flood light down, revealing only blackness. Approximately 4 seconds and it's passed, and the light of an indeterminate distance from the hole flickers on for approximately 2 seconds and back off.
There was a light down there. It's gone now, but it was on for like a second. Did you see it? Yes, can you estimate the depth of this hole? No way. It's too deep. At least a kilometer. Like, way more than a kilometer. Hmm. Thank you. Can you still hear the sounds of the child? Uh-huh. She still sounds far away. I don't feel like I'm getting any closer. It's like, for every step I take, she takes one down. Please continue down until you encounter anything unusual. D-9884 continues to send the SCP-87 for approximately an hour, covering an additional 164 flights. She stops to rest on the 253rd landing, consuming one nutrient and fires several gulps of water. D-9884 is at an estimated at a, at a 1.1 kilometers below the initial landing. Yet the sound of the shot has not changed in volume. After pausing for 4 minutes, D-9884 resumes her descent, making those stops for another 216 flights. One and a half hours later, D-9884 is on the 469th landing, and approximately 1.8 kilometers below the ground level. I'm not getting anywhere. I think it's time I went back. I'm going down as one thing, but this is a long climb back. You have been provided with food, water, and blankets the last 24 hours. Please continue down. No, I think I'm gonna go back up. D9884 turns and sorts the previous flight of stairs. D9884 ice screams. SCP-87 and one, the face is directly behind D9884, blocking her ascent. The face appears approximately 30 centimeters from the lens of the camera. Its five eyes are fixed directly on the lens, this time not looking at the subject, but the person viewed the video feed. The video feed glitches and freezes for four seconds, accompanied by the sound like screeching noise from the auto feed. It then comes to the individuals of D9884 descending the stairs rapidly. D-9884, tagged and hysterical. It's been following me! This whole time it's been right behind me! Oh god, it's right behind me! It was looking right at me! Dr. Blank, please do something! And please help me! Oh god, no, please get away from me! No, please! I knew it was following me to... Help make it leave! Please, no, I was looking at me. It was staring at me. It knew I was here and it's been watching me this entire time. Oh god, please help me. No, please. This continues in a similar fashion until the end. D-9884 continues to scream and plead hysterically as she rapidly descends the staircase. The previously heard static like screeching seems to overlay the video feed, neath which can still be heard the original sound of the crying child. Approximately 14 in flight style, the video feed swings to show the area directly behind it, and D-9884. The face is now approximately 27 years from the camera lens. It is not staring at the subject, where it is fixated on the camera lens, giving the illusion it is making eye contact with those viewing the footage. It is important to note that since the sighting of SCP-871, the sound of the girl crying and fleeing has been increasing in volume. It came D-9884 is nearing the source. After an approximate 150 panic, it flies at the scent with three visual conferences Informations of SCP-871 still pursuit, D-9884 trips and appears to fall unconscious. I hope he's in case strong proximity to the source of the crying. The static and screeching noise continue. Video feed shows yet another descending supply of stairs, and again D-9884 still has not reached the base of the stairwell. Twelve seconds ends of motionlessness pass before the face comes in full view of the camera. Eye contact we made directly with the viewer. Audio and video feed is cut out, and no connection is re-established.
Now we move on to SCP-88, The Lizard King. Object class, object number SCP-88. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-88 is remained sealed in its airtight a case at all times. Let me double check a few things. All right. The case is constructed of transparent acrylic plastic to resist the corrupt effects of SCP-88 secretions. Any event that SCP-88 should awaken from hibernation, any room that it is stored within should be constructed of durable plastics, rubber, or ceramics to hinder its ability to escape. The temperature of SCP-88's containment and should not exceed 15 degrees Celsius, and any personnel entering containment must observe for level 4 hazardous material protocols and wear the appropriate protective gear at all times. Any personnel who do not observe proper containment protocols in the presence of SCP-88 or who shows signs of physical mutation are to be demoted to D-class and held for observation. <sighs> Description SCP-88 is a humanoid with reptilian features which appears to have been mummified, mummified in a languid position. However, SV-88 is merely in a state of hibernation from which it may recover if it is again exposed to a more hospitable environment than its current containment. Research has indicated that SCP-88 is approximately 6,000 years old and is capable of creating a variety of hazardous biological compounds from its mouth and hands. Some of these substances can be of great strategic value if replicated, but until a means to extract them without awakening SCP-88 is found, Research into this area is on hold. SCP-88 was recovered with the modified eye remains of 23 beings sharing a similar morphology. However, none of these beings were alive. Either examination suggests they, that they were originally human. Information in obtained by agents E0883 and E0887 and their subsequent mutation due to SCP-88 exposure corroborates this theory. Addendum. SCP-88 was recovered in the 1930s from a subterranean complex below Los, L Los Angeles, California, or also known as LA. The site was originally discovered by IGWS using a device he called a radio x-ray, which was little more than a mechanic dowsing rod. While well, S's methods were dubious, his discovery was not. After mapping a series of tunnels and gold deposits below the city, S declared that he had found the lost city of the Lizard People, as described in the legends of Arizona's as Hopi tribe. S's claims went as far at, or as we featured on the front page of LA Times on January 29, 1934, before the Foundation was able to verify his claims in Islands, Mr. S. I hope they don't mean in kill. I hope they mean just anesthetize. The subterranean complex was not nearly as extensive as, as described in legend, and most of the artifacts recovered within were too corroded to provide a significant information. Save for a large mark message carved into the rock wall of an unfinished tunnel. For partial translation of the text, see document 8814. Containment for each overview. In more than 70 years of containment, SCP-88 has only roused from its safe hibernation twice. Reaching containment with a caustic fluid that dissolves most minerals and metals. Each time, multiple personnel were exposed to a second compound which SV88 uses to propagate itself. Affected personnel underwent an end of painful mutation after which they shared physical or characteristics of SV88. Those few who received a large dose of, of the compound administered directly via mouth to mouth contact were changed to fastest of subsequently sacrificed. Themselves to protect SCP-88 from um, harm. 
SCP-88 has also demonstrated the ability to produce both neurotoxins and liquid and gases formed to combat as per and meant to personnel. Considering during the second breach was re achieved by isolating SCP-88 and affected personnel in the facility and lowering the temperature. Affected personnel built a pedestal from discarded equipment, upon which SV-88 took a re-umbered position before slipping back into hibernation. The mutated personnel were neutralized at this point, and SV-88 was returned to containment. The current strategy of low uh, temperature and non-metallic containment has been successful in keeping SV-88 isolated. SCP-88 was classified into safe status on November blank, 19 blank. Moving on, we have SCP-89, Tophet, or Tophet, or Tophet, I'm not sure. I'm guessing Tophet. We'll see. Object class, Euclid. See below. Oh yeah, I have number is SCP-89. Special containment procedures. SCP-89 is, is stored in a, in a special strip of containment at Site-36 and monitored it for low occlusion events. Mobile Task Force or its MU-089, consisting of personnel with advanced training in linguistics, psychology, and tactical diplomacy, has been established in order to respond to such occlusion events. Upon the occurrence of occlusion events, the Mobile Task Force or SMU-89 is translated into the location as to identify the primary subjects of that triggering, here and designated as SCP-89-A and SCP-89-B. Then execute the protocol M8, which consists of the following steps. 1. Transport SCP-89 to SCP-89-A's location and explain protocol O M A to SCP A nine B and two at such time as SCP A nine B is prepared to voluntarily execute protocol M eight, wherein to O S V A nine B any assistance as SCP A nine B may request in connection and with SCP A nine B performing the following actions: exerting SCP A nine A into cavities together with inflammable materials such as oiled wood or charcoal. They're denying them. The successful execution of protocol M8 requires the voluntary compliance of SCP 89B in a sober and uncoerced state. Likewise, SCP 89A must be conscious and alert during the execution of the protocol. It is recommended that SCP 89B be restrained, although not sedated, following conditions so as to avoid interference with the completion of the protocol, as the process is extremely painful and fatal to SCP 89A. If SCP-89B refuses to voluntarily execute protocol M8 in accordance with the aforementioned specifications, MTF MU-89 is to explain the prospective consequences of failing to successfully complete the protocol, and make every effort to persuade SCP-89B to cooperate. If MTF MU-89's best efforts to persuade SCP-89B are unsuccessful. SCP-89 is to be designated as Cater class and protocol M9 is to be executed. Reference document 89M9. The use of intimidation, threats, or mind altering drugs or intoxicants in an effort to affect SCP-89B's free will and any attempt to complete protocol M8 without SCP-89B's participation or, or voluntary cooperation or otherwise other but then, as described, are strictly prohibited since these measures invalidate the attempted completion of the protocol and are known to intensify the severity of the attended type S event. It is also recommended, it although not requ a required by a protocol M8, to cause the execution of Step 2 of M8 protocol to be accompanied by the surrounding of horns and percussion, or, and percussion instruments, as doing so may mask the sounds made by SCP 89A during the execution of the protocol. Upon a successful execution of protocol M8, 
The related Type S event generally begins to evade within seven hours. Description SCP 89 is a glazed earthen unware uh, statue, approximately three meters in height, depicting a winged, bull headed human with an open mouth. And from the statue's torch or so is hinged and can be opened from the top to reveal a cavity. Approximately 0.6 kilometers in volume and can be locked from the outside. The rear of the statue bears an inscription in a a Ananit language, possibly Punic. Dr. Blank translated the expert out of text as Nightmare of, of Malok, Malok the, the Loveless, Mental Malok, the Heavy Judger of Men. The statue dates from approximately 2nd century BCE. On infrequent occasions, sometimes separated by periods in excess of a century, the statue speaks. The mechanism by which these sounds are made is not understood, and the mouth of the statue does not move. The statue's location I mean, locutions are in a uh, are in a Canaanite language, probably the same language as the inscription, and consists of the name or description of SCP A nine A, a demand or a protocol for or a pro a demand for protocol A to be accomplished, together with instructions for doing so, and the description of the attendant type S event in figurative language. Each locution event is followed with an and a period of 3 to 11 days. By the commencement of a Type S event being the description and given a locution event, unless S protocol M8 has already been completed, that each Type S event is an epidemic, natural or disaster, mass hysteria involving genocide or other massacres, or other event involving extensive damage to property and loss of human and lives over a period of time that that continues until protocol or M8 is successfully completed. In case of each document in the location event, the attend event type the attend type as event while significant is limited to a geographic area that does not directly affect SCP A nine B. This has in some undocumented uh, Aces result in dependency of a type S event for extended duration of time due to USCP 9 bs unawareness of SCP 9 or protocol M8 or to SCP 9 bs one willingness to undertake protocol M8 in order to arrest a type S event. For each locution event, SCP 9 a is a healthy, unblemished human infant or child between 8 months and 6 years of age. An SCP 9 and B is that child's natural mother. In all documented cases, at the time of the locution event, SCP 89A and B are each alive and healthy and experience a strong bond of trust and affection with each other. Following SCP 89B's placement of, of SCP 89A in the cavity and the shift of the inflammable materials, SCP 89A will, will burn and be destroyed over a period of two to five hours. Other than one, Mail to a file from Dr. Garcia. With the role of SCP-89 and, and actually causing type S events is unclear, experience has demonstrated that the prompt and precise application of SF protocol M8 is effective in limiting the damages that they do. Dr. Petal Petal has uh, speculated that SCP-89 does not cause type S events, but merely anticipates them and provides a means to mitigate their effects. Addendum 2 a partial list of documented type S events that were terminated by means of protocol M8, inclusive of documented completion and of protocol M8 that predate the foundation's acquisition of custody of SVA 9 and follows. Date of locution March 21st, 1788. Description of type S event in locution of event. The flame shall consume their houses. It is, yeah, and the markets, and the temples, and all of their dwelling places, they shall be destroyed. Fire in the city of blank. Outcome. Protocol M88 completed at day 829 after early locution event. 66% of the city's buildings destroyed. Dave Locution. It is a hard word to say, you know. December 2nd, 1850. 
Description of type S event and location an event. The false prophet shall gather the evil to them to them and cast them against the princess. They shall each each of them be slain and their fields made barren. Type S event. Large scale as ionic has is peasant uprising and blank. Outcome proclamate it completed on day a thirteen hundred and sixty-three after your location event. Massacres associated with uprising and discretion and attended agricultural collapse amounted for at least blank million casualties. Date of locution November twenty third, nineteen fifty one. Description of type S event and, and location event. The earth shall tremble, and the sea shall rise, and be cast against the earth. The mountains shall vaunt fire. Its voice shall be a darkness and death. Type S event. Earthquake and volcanic eruption in blank. Outcome. Protocol M8 was as executed within 31 hours of location event. No tsunami resulted, although the geological models had anticipated that one would occur from a seismic event in an area of no fatalities. <sighs> Date of Locution 1970 Description of Type S events and Location Event The rain shall scour the earth and, and sweep away man and his beasts and all its works. The deluge shall take them all. Type S Event Cyclone blank. Outcome. Brooklyn made executed on day 49 after location event. Casualties from flooding, ink disease, and starvation estimated at blank thousand. Date of locution April 4th, 20 something. Description of type S event in location event. Data expunged. Type S event. Data expunged. Outcome ongoing. Protocol M8 not ex not yet executed. And now we have SCP-90, also known as Alpha Rubik's Cube. Alpha Rubik's Cube. Okay. Item number SCP-90. Object class Keter. Special Criterion Procedures. Artifact must be held in a secure bunker in a facility at site blank and constantly monitored by approved Class D personnel. The object's new ray train is to be imaged every time it shifts. New ray trains are fed into the facility's Class OT supercomputer. The Division Chief is to be notified of all changes in current estimations every half hour. No personnel is to touch SCP-90 except under order or blank. The XA security level as in created for monitoring SCP-90, non-AXA personnel found in the facility will be terminated. <sighs> Description SCP-90 was located and retrieved in blank, ink blank on April 10th, 19 blank. Prior to retrieval, SCP-90 had been located in the chamber at the nearby cathedral. SCP-90 was removed. The cathedral of Byron, six months in the priests, were terminated. SCP-90 has been located at site blank since retrieval. The object's initial location prior to retrieval to the cathedral is unrecorded. SCP-90 is a black cubic structure to 1 cm by 20 cm by 20 cm. Made of an unknown ceramic material. Object is classified as indestructible following tests outlined in document 90B unattached. Each side is, un is divided into 10,000 individual squares in the arrangement similar to a Rubik's Cube. The larger segments for edge, each segment is 2 millimeters wide. Each square has a part, however, designed to etch into the surface. Etchings glow white. Unknown internal structure cause as the realignment of a single row or column roughly every 2.8 seconds. Vague records of the object's alignments have been kept since 1242 CE, but those records kept before 1533 CE have been lost. Modern technology has allowed the exact alignments to be imaged and recorded, as well as studied. 
Segments are divided by a thin white line unless they are correctly unless they are aligned correctly with a small direct with square directly adjacent to them. There are twenty two correct alignments on the object's surface currently. See twenty two ninety ninety e zero four d unattach for complete its current object alignment. The I'm not reading all those numbers. It's currently the only segment of three adjustment subjects on the surface of SCP-90. B I'm not reading all those numbers, and C I'm not reading all those numbers are the four segment and alignments. There is also a six segment alignment. C document 90 B for research involving in alignment effects. <sighs> Full item. And police transmit hypothesis to cause an unparalleled disaster to occur. Addendum AXA security personnel should see document 90B. Document 90A. Dr. Blank experiment notes. Experiment 12. Observation is going well. We have managed to develop a system to record and analyze the shifts in the cube almost as quickly as they observed. No correlation between shifts and any world events found yet. Experiment 48. We observed a six segment and assignment in today on the first side. It was zero and fast without incident. Two hours later, a research assistant returned from the break with news that a tsunami had occurred on the Indian Ocean and caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and extensive property damage. No correlation, and it's currently known, but we will make note of it. Experiment 150. After our 120th alignment on the fourth side of the cube and uh, 120th accident report into the lab, we designated the fourth side as a local and will implement safety measures tomorrow. Zafford is discouraged for making bets regarding the outcome of alignments. Experiment 172. A six segment alignment was recorded this morning on the local side. As safety precautions, site blank was evacuated. evacuated. Two hours later, a containment breach occurred, but resulted in no loss of life due to the evacuation. Objects determined to predict events, not cause them. First site designated as a global. Upgrade to Euclid's, Euclid's as requested. Experiment 240. We stepped up our experiments today by attempting to modify the cube itself. When D class personnel blank attempted to make a shift, SV90 immediately created a 10 segment alignment of its own coordinated top up left corner of the, the left local side. Exactly two hours later, SCP blank broke containment and that expunged. Agents blank and blank were also lost during the incident. Recommended this force shift testing of SCP 90 on first phone. A great scarce as a fruit as SCP-90 is obviously capable of causing events of its own accord. Object may be sentient. Anyway, this has been SCP-86, 87, 88, 89, and 90. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you really enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.